Well, in this episode of Red Car Roundup, we're uh, working on the Opal. Dan here, the USB shop. Um, so, happen to be new on the block here for some reason. We have the 71, I believe, Opal GT, which we had bought, and it was actually a very solid car, but it had no driveline, no motor, no transmission, um, uh, relatively otherwise complete. My old man had a great idea. He's like, oh, you should put a Ford Turbo 2.3 liter out of like a SVO Mustang in there. I'm like, that would be pretty cool. Doesn't fit very good. So we did on a pile, pile of cutting. But uh, today's plan, or this video's plan, I should say, is get everything we've cut. So as you can see there, we got a bunch of large holes. Well, this side started off like that, and now we've got it kind of plated in. I'm using a bunch of, uh, I think it's 18 gauge. It's not structural. We're essentially just uh, sm uh, <laughs> losing a little bit of foot room. So this is your pedal box area. So it gets a little smaller. We do have to put new pedals in this thing anyways. We're gonna go floor mount, so it's fine. Uh, the frame and all that's still tickety boo. Um, I did weld in the motor mounts. So in the last video, we had the motor and transmission setting in place, uh, leveled and whatnot. And I had scabbed those together with some really ugly welds and some just scrap metal to hold them where I wanted it. But well, we got the motor out, now we can weld it nicely. So we weld it all the way around and then I weld a nice piece of pipe from the bottom of the frame right to it. So it's plenty, plenty strong. So today, we well, We'll see, I gotta go help my buddy Mikey. And he's in control of the storage situation and the trailer situation. So he's a very important guy. He needs to go help move a sewing machine, of all things. Uh, he's into fancy sewing. Man stuff. And we gotta keep him happy, so I gotta help him move a sewing machine. But in the meantime, we're gonna work in here. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be putting a whole lot of heat to this anymore, simply because I don't want to all of a sudden get the call and be like, we got a scaddle, and I just finished welding the crap out of it. So. I think what I'd like to do is this this up here is really butchered. We gotta clean this all up. I do actually have some uh, fairly thick steel we can put in here if we want, but I don't think I'm gonna run anything. On, on this side, I was concerned about the steering shaft going through, but I think, you know what, it should be fine. We'll brace it to the frame, so really no issue for like a little carton joint, whatever it's called, and a bearing. We should have lots of room there, so I think I'm just gonna kind of cut this all out start tacking it all together now hey a better man than myself could probably make it out of one piece of steel and a bunch of bends but instead i'll make it out of no bends and a bunch of pieces of steel welding and a little bit of seam sealer will be fine now once that's all taken care of we gotta straighten out uh the cradle it's been cut out which is actually nice it makes it much easier to get the motor in in and out which we've done a few times cut some of the junk out of here the rust whatever we want I would like to take this to the car wash and blow it all out. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. And then otherwise everything else will just be painted a nice coat of flat black in here. And essentially, once we get everything welded up, the motor does fit. It fits, it's a little tall. But we can put it in and then uh, it shouldn't be coming out again. So it could be a bit of a permanent thing, which would be really, really nice because we're always battling room here. And when a motor is in a car, it takes up less space. Who'd have thought? So let's uh, start cutting this out and see exactly where we end up. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. I don't know. I'm fighting it out.
I'll let you know the battery died. Destroy my life. So I did a little slice and dicing. So a little section there. It's kind of like the, it's not quite the frame. I guess it kind of is, but it was all beat up. Someone in the past had just whacked it and folded it over and it was kind of rusty on the inside. Look, look at the ugliness. So, and it's actually quite thin material. So I, uh, I had some plate that was like twice as thick. So I welded that on top. So it's, it's way stronger. And actually that's where the oil filter is. I still got to weld into it a little bit, but it'll be, it'll be plenty. Um, I then just kind of sliced, diced the, the one piece and pushed it over well, then I weld a new section in the front, and then I actually double walled it right there. So I don't know. We'll see. No, I haven't got down the bottom. This little section of the frame, someone had modified it again, the top cap, I guess, of it. So we'll have to get in there and just plate it. I believe what it is is it's probably just uh, you know like a U section, and then the floor sits on top of it. So it's not nothing too crazy. Um, we'll weld it. It should be fine. The problem I'm at right now is it's time to just start welding and I don't want to weld and then go out. I hate doing that. I just, uh, we don't want fires. Um, in here we got lots of, lots of room. There's nothing in the way again with floor mount pedals. The only thing we got to worry about is the steering. I had to cut it. I couldn't get it out and it's kind of all, you know, generic, but, uh, it did go at an angle like that. So we keep it below there. We should be fine. And even that, if we had to go down and put a U joint in there, uh, once we have a top on here, I might weld this section right here with some of that heavy gauge plate because worst case I could hang a bearing from it and uh, and go in. So that's another thought. And I think when I do this, I'll do two pieces, one square piece, and then uh, whatever we got to do on the sides and whatnot. But it's boring. I know it's not very exciting. However, when you're trying to fit motors in places that they've never been or, or whatever, it's, it's a hassle. And again, this, man, I tell you, I, when I Googled it originally, I could have sworn people have been doing this left and right. I found one guy that did it and it was a non-turbo. So, pioneers. But uh, anyways, the motor mounts are in, I'm pretty happy with that. I think they're dialed with lots of strength. Once it gets in there, we, we could always put a cross member in, which would be pretty sweet, but I think we'll be okay. We get that little box in. Before you know it, it starts looking like that. I realize it doesn't look very pretty, but you clean all the edges up, you seam seal it, you paint it black. It'll look just like factory. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, it's uh, many, many days in the future. I've been in the other garage to shine juice in and work on the 56. And I did some glass stuff on the Nomad. And oh man, I don't even know what's happening. And some videos have come out, some haven't. I'm all over the place. I got to get back to a structured, Work environment, never gonna happen. So I gotta get back to this. I want to finish up, I haven't done anything. I gotta finish off this uh, butchery over there. I would like to clean up on here, paint it all black, maybe seam seal, I think I have some over there, hopefully somewhere in a box. And then paint it all black, make it taken care of. Maybe we'll pressure wash this thing real quick. I'd like to get the motor and transmission situated in this thing so it can then be a roller and I can push outside and uh, I want to do dueling tri fives for a little bit and this will be easiest to push back in and work on what I want. I got to order parts and stuff for it anyways, but uh, that's the plan. I'll get cleaned up a little bit and we'll get started. Well, there we have it. I mean, it's definitely not overly pretty, but it's a bunch of little pieces put together. I got some screwing around to do up, up there, but we're gonna buzz the whole thing in. And you know what, once it's all painted flat black, I mean, look at the look at the hard angles that the factory one had anyways. It's kind of just what it is. So I'm gonna have to cram my fat ass in here now and weld like a wild man 
get all that in, and then uh, seam seal it. Take a little break, clean it all up, paint it black. And a little bit of grinding in there as well. But uh, that should make everything fit quite nicely. I think we should still have lots of room for the steering shaft, I hope. Otherwise, we're gonna have to do some whatever. I think they're called double carton joints or those those U-joint things, but we'll figure it all out. Um, I'd left it so there's a lip sticking over, so I'll just kind of weld it all in. Now what I thought I'd do is just grind it down so everything is flush, it'll get into the weld and be perfect. So I'll probably actually do the outside stuff first. Then we'll climb in and do the ugliness. Well, that was an ugly job. No bones about it, but uh, it actually came out, I think, pretty dang on good. As far as I'm showing the motor mounts where you want them, all in there is all 100% welded and sturdy. I blew it all up with air real quick. The next thing we're gonna do, I got a bunch of hammers and dollies. We're gonna see if we can straighten this out. I cut some of the junk out that was there. We'll hammer and dolly that straight because it's got some ugh, grossness. Uh, once we get a radiator in there, I think we'll put some sort of brace across the top or something. Uh, there was a big hole cut in the center. I just finished cutting it out and uh, looks like the battery had gibbled itself so we need a new battery tray or something like that but that's all that we got a long way to go for that so we'll get that all straightened out then I have uh, a little bit of seam sealer so we'll go just over the edges make it look nice um, Man, this thing was just gobbed like that's all factory just seam sealer and whatnot it's a little it's a little dirty but uh, I'm gonna rub it down with just a bristle pad and I hit it with, I had this sitting around, she's been a while, around for a while, but a little bed liner, kind of dust that in, just give it a bit of a textured look, at least at the back section here. We'll flat black the front, and then that's it for right now. We might take this to the car wash night if I convince Daddy, she wants to go a little, uh, little date night. You know, take your woman somewhere she wants to go, like the buggy bath. And uh, if we can hose that all off, get it 100%, let that dry and then let this dry overnight. Um, actually, I'd like to paint that motor if it's gonna be in, so that might be a thing for tomorrow. Um, get painted up, maybe even tonight, we'll see how it goes. I'm babbling. Let's uh, set the camera up, see if we can knock this uh, core sport just a little bit straighter. All right, I got my muffs on so I, I can't hear myself talk. Hopefully I'm not uh, too loud. We're gonna use the big one to get everything. Well, we're probably just gonna go ahead and smash this. Bad. It looks like there was something that uh, ran through and they just kind of folded it all together. What can we do here? This isn't going to be as nice as I was uh, hoping. Quite stiff. Hmm. 
Oh, it's not bad. It's got a bit of a lean to it. Oh, this side's got some torch cuts to it. Eh, we're gonna call it good enough. So we got it all kind of blown off. Now, when I got this thing, someone had previously uh, covered all the wiring and tape, so we're just gonna go ahead and carry on with that tradition and save us much time. Now, this is just clear semen joint stealer. Just top coat in 20 minutes, something like that. You can use a, a tool, but it's basically caulking. So we're just gonna go ahead and hopefully there's some in here. This is an old one. Just kind of go in there around the edges. Um, and then after the fact, I just go with my finger. It's not going to look pretty, but you saw what we were working with. So we're just sealing the joint, sealing the weld. So we'll do this. And then, like I said, it'll sit for a half hour. Just has to kind of get like a crust on the top. And then we can start spraying on the... Uh, a little bit of texture spray, bed liner. <laughs> it's good for everything. And we'll flat black this thing. Go to the car wash. Okay, so we got this thing. It's been, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. Um, we're gonna put a little spray on there. Now, we're actually not gonna do a whole lot of coating with it. It's more of a stand back and just kind of let it texture a little bit. Get the little globules in there. Then we'll just go over the whole thing with uh, some flat black. Uh, maybe I should mask in there a little, eh? Just to kind of make it look a little decent. I'm actually pretty impressed with the way this came out. I think it's, uh, it looks weird, but kind of the weird you'd expect, you know what I mean? For underhood of an Opal with a Ford motor in it. So we'll let this sit up for a little bit. Then we'll come back to it with some flat black. Go to the car wash. Danielle's excited. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and spray in here real quick. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I wanna get down low pretty good. Up in here, we'll just kinda of mask it the best we can, but once the motor's in, we can get to the top half pretty easy. And it's flat black, so uh, it blends real easily. Let's see what happens. Well, just like that, look at that. Looks basically factory fresh as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it looks like a little box is in there. So be it. Um, and motor has been degreased. So take it to the buggy bath real quick, clean it all up. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and try and brush paint the block and uh, maybe the cylinder head black, obviously. 
The valve cover will probably take off and we'll paint it nice, you know, scuff the top, do whatever we gotta do. I know a lot of people are saying doing timing belt and stuff. We will probably do that at some point, but that's not happening today. I'd like to get this thing kind of in and taken care of. It's pretty easy to take it out now that I've done it 15 times. So we'll do that. We'll have to pull a few things off. We have, you know, block heater, some ground straps, and uh, there's some different coolers and stuff. like. That. I don't know if it's all needed or not for this exact purpose so we'll see what's we'll see what's there we'll leave some stuff on there but yeah i got the camera charged and we'll come back and we'll uh we'll paint so i'm gonna blow it off there real quick okay we're pretty much ready for paint now i just have a couple of questions for you ford guys because you'll know better so i'm pretty sure talking about maybe the last video but i think that's just egr which i can split and weld back up and be fine or put a plug in or whatever and then so these two hoses here they're coolant and they go looks to be like one goes into well they're both for heater core but then they continue to go around they go into the oil filter thing for an oil cooler and i was like is that something this thing actually needs or is that just like some fancy option and it comes out of here and here and it goes around otherwise i think we have all the stuff we need with the turbo there's a few little obviously vacuum line this little thing is free we have our feed line, we have our drain, all that's good. Turbo looks nice inside, look at that, ooh. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna start painting this thing black. We're gonna paint the transmission silver real quick, just with a rattle can, leave the bell housing as is. Go in and have something to eat. Should be a good one. Oh, yeah, do I need these? Okay, step one. We're gonna slather the transmission in some aluminum paint. I wonder if this thing's had a transmission uh, put in it because it's orange. Uh, the aluminum paint may have been a little excessive here, but, and we're gonna paint right over the dirt on the bottom. It'll dull to a nice dirty DD speed shop finish. So we got that done just so we don't get any uh, overspray on anything. You know, we really care about stuff here. Oh, I broke off a sensor, that's not great. Huh. Oh well. Too many sensors in this thing anyways. Realistically, you're never, ever, ever gonna see this, but my little plaid heart could not handle a orange transmission. That was just, uh, just ridiculous. It's basically like a uh, rebuilt Tremec. Okay, with the transmission all taken care of, is this leak? No. I'm just messy. You want to get all the junk off your brush. This is just uh, leftover flat black from the Nomad. So we're going to go ahead and brush this in. If you want all the expert ticks, tips, Uncle Tony had a great video on brush paint a video. I then copied it. So go watch my video. I'm not linking it, you'll figure it yourself. So it's been about an hour. Uh, still a little on the wet side, but uh, you know, it looks pretty good. I decided to paint the exhaust manifold. It'll just burn off and be fine. But uh, so we dazzled it with the paintbrush and then any parts I couldn't get, I just with the uh, flat black. I'm sure it probably looks a lot more uh, decent on camera than it does in real life because it looks pretty cheesy, but so be it. 
I would like to at least set this thing between the rails tonight if I could. It's kind of an ugly job and there's just stuffs everywhere. So if we can slip slide that motor in, which I have to re-rig it a little bit and get it. Needs all the angle, <sighs> pain in the ass. But if we can slide in there, get it sitting on the mounts, hopefully that'll go pretty easily. Put a floor jack, it's in the other garage. Put a floor jack on the transmission to hold it. Everything can dry and then tomorrow, I can build a transmission cross member real quick. Well, it came with one in the car. I'll probably see if I can modify it somehow. Put that in there and I would like to peel off this intake. So this is now, I guess I can show you. It's a two piece intake manifold and the bottom piece has the injectors and all that on it. And the top piece, I mean, it's got a couple of vacuum lines. It just bolts to it and then there was this. I don't know what I don't know what this is. It's got to be vacuum of some sort that goes to this magic box. So I don't know. But I thought worst case, if I peel that off, then we could just put like a log manifold out here and carry on. The only issue will be um, charging. It becomes a problem because that's where the alternator is. But I feel like we're making a bracket. We're screwing around doing all sorts of things, anyways. So yeah, it should be fun. It should be fun, but uh, that's that's future damn problems. If we take this intake off, we can close the hood, then we're all set. Huh, you know, I never noticed, but uh, oh no, it's still taller than that. Just having a moment there. We'll get it fit. Let's uh, we're gonna sweep up. I'm gonna push stuff off with my feet, and we'll slide her in. Ooh. Now, I don't mean to brag, but I'm getting pretty good at putting motors that don't run in little red cars. What's going on here? Got junk on the floor. Okay, now I'm gonna see if we can get this thing up and over and in a little bit, flat-wise, and then we'll have to wrap a ratchet strap around the crank to the hook to give it a pile of tilt. We should be good, but let's get it in first. Close to in. I hoist it. Well, that's wet. Oh, oh damn it. Oh, the grinder. Gentle, gentle girl, gentle man. Mer, another reason you should be here. All right, we're gonna let that beat up the brand new paint and we'll fix it with a spray bomb. Oh, gentle. Okay, we got her. Whew, okay. This is some tense, tense stuff here. Oh, you know, if there's a better engine crane in the market, I need to find one. Okay, let's uh, tilt this thing with a ratchet strap.
Well, this is what I saw in my head. I don't know about you guys. I didn't have any doubts. Anyway, we got her in there. Uh, the turbo inlet is tight. It'll have to take a hard turn. We have lots of room around the exhaust. We should drop down there. That'll be fine. I think this thing is a two-piece drive shaft, so we're going to have to figure, just get a one-piece made. Um, I think we got to lift it up just a little bit. It's kind of funny on the mounts. I can fit one finger between the pulley and the cross member, and I got to just do a little more trimming right there. Just not touching, but close. We'll see how rattly this thing is. Ultimately, um, solid motor mounts may be the way to go, but we can figure something out from there. And uh, I'm thinking about this intake manifold. So we have a lot of room now that we kind of have it all dialed together. Something seems, it seems to fit differently than I had it, but uh, whatever it may be. Anyways, now that I have all this space here, if we maybe move the intake over a little bit, like put a wedge on it and then sheet metal intake over here, it could go right through the, you know, what's left of the course port. That's, it's late, it's late. And the uh, alternator can fit in the stock location with a tensioner and then we're all taken care of, which would be really easy. I think that probably is the way to go modify the intake manifold to fit around stuff versus put it straight out and then we got to screw around with an alternator. I've seen guys do that and like they lower the alternator and it looks really butchery. So yeah, stock alternator and then it's just a V-belt. I'm gonna probably have to make some sort of tensioner. I don't remember how it tensioned before. If it was on the alternator or maybe it was on the power steering or maybe it was air conditioning, it had all those things. But we should be able to have that dialed I mean, I got all these holes here. I kept a little bracket so we can have some sort of a standoff to hold it up. So let's say the alternator hangs off till there. Intake comes up over and through. It definitely may not be the best and I don't know much about turbo. So we may experience a little bit of turbo lag or something along those lines, which is, I guess the way it's gonna be. We can always spend money and put different turbo on it and people sell all, all manner of items for these hot rods. Well, this 2.3, but uh, I don't think it'd be that much of a run. Straight out, in, radiator be there, inner cooler, and then over. How hard can it be? In theory. In theory. That's really it for the night. I'm leaving it on a win. Tomorrow, hopefully, uh, trans cross member in. We'll take a look at the drive shaft, see what we gotta do about that. And, uh, but look at all the room. We'll have lots of room for steering. So a little, that's the knuckle, a little, some sort of a support there through the firewall. That's also kind of wet, so let's let it dry. I don't want to touch too bad, but I only mangle up one little spot. I had to do a little touch up on, on the install. See you tomorrow. Uh, it's early morning uh, before work actually, but I want to get a couple things done. Button up shirt. Anyway, um, I have to, I wanted to paint the valve cover. Honestly, this is a thumbnail uh, thing, but I want to see what this thing looks like. And we're gonna take the intake off, make sure the hood fits. We'll get that dialed together this evening and then maybe we'll work on the intake a little bit. I'm not really too sure, but next video, next video. But uh, real quick, I'm gonna buzz off, I think these two bolts and then I think there's just a few bolts around the intake and this whole mess should come off. Then what I wanna do is just mask off the valve cover. It's not perfect by any means. We'll probably have to sandblast down the road. I don't wanna take it off. I don't know what gaskets go in there, if there's anything and I'd like to keep it sealed, but I wanna paint it all red and then we'll scuff up the uh, like the exposed stuff. So you know, fuel injection, turbo, all that'd be all nice forward. We gotta make it look nice. And then realistically, if the intake's off to the side, this is all gonna be what you're gonna see. So we'll mask it, fog it red, come back a few hours later, uh, and it should look uh, different. I'll just take it off, and we'll uh, we'll see what we have. So this is the intake. It literally was one, two, three, four, five, and there's six bolts and then two there and the whole mess came off. Um, I pulled uh, spark plug wires off and this little, whatever that is, PCV or, I don't know, some sort of vent. Uh, the intake is very simple. Like I said, we'll be able to put on some sort of a plate there. If we can offset or whatever we gotta do, we'll use the uh, other size, we'll trace it out, drill some holes or maybe even just make an open plenum. It doesn't really matter. And like I said, if we get over enough, we can avoid the alternator. Now, what we're gonna do, we got some gloss fire red because that was what was in stock. 
So I'm really just gonna kinda dust it on there best I can. And we're gonna end up, uh, I, I clean up a little bit, we're gonna scuff it so there won't be actually that much red on it. So I'll get this taken care of real quick. Then we'll take a look at it before we go to work. There we have it. Doesn't look perfect, it's kind of crinkly and gross, but uh, we'll be putting that in the blast cabinet um, at some point and we'll make it look nice. We're just kind of going for the look here, which I think it'll, eh. on camera, at night, uh, on your little phone, it'll look good. See you in uh, nine hours. And just like that, we're home. Um, I did work on the valve cover a little bit. It's, the paint's still kind of too soft to scuff, so I kind of went over it with some, uh, some solvent. So it's kind of got the, the look we're going for. Again, I'd like to, I'll scuff this up. Uh, well, we'll do it at some other point. Again, it'll probably have to come off, be all sandblasted and whatnot. But it's all together. It looks good. We have the engine crane out of the way. Um, I just welded a pipe across the transmission. Now, this car actually has a two-piece drive shaft, which I don't think I have the second piece anyways, but it'd be very short. This transmission is now longer and uh, yeah, so I gotta decide. So all I do is I weld a pipe there to kind of hold it because I don't know what I'm gonna do for uh, the angle uh, for the transmission mount exactly. We're in the ballpark. I mean, we're not, we're not crazy out to lunch. The other thing is this tail shaft or the, uh, the yoke, it's got some sort of a harmonic-y balancer thing, which is quite bulky and it becomes rather tight in that tunnel. So. Another thing, we'll probably have to find a different yoke for it. T5 Ford stuff, it's got to be all the same, so I'm sure it'll be fine. But, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. I did, so I pulled this off. I'm just thinking about what we're going to do. I think I'd like to start on this, maybe. So, if you like Opal stuff, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I think I'm going to do one more Opal video, and then this will be outside, because I want dual and tri fives because I really want to get those done as soon as possible, so I start putting miles on them. Uh, if we're taking a power tour, I'm obsessed with putting miles on things before we go. Uh, very unroadkill of me. But I got some miscellaneous steel here for a flange we can make, and then uh, I'm not building out of aluminum. I could probably practice taking, but we'll do it out of steel. And uh, decide what we want to do. Ultimately, uh, I did put the alternator on. It was originally meant to sit up high, but I thought we could probably lower it make a custom mount, be, you know, low slung. Well, obviously I have a, a custom uh, adjuster and, or tension, I should say, and a custom belt. And then for the intake, we'll have to do something where we kind of come up and over and right in this area and keep it as low as we possibly can. And we should be good. Now I'm bracking my brain how we're gonna make this manifold work. That's definitely a little unique. It'll kind of have to, I guess, kind of come up and over or do something, but I'll do some Googling because they sell stuff like this. Now, it could be a different two-piece. We're trying to make our own top piece, but I think we're there. So please do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Tell your friends. And uh, I wash this thing up. Give it a little wipe down. This thing's going to be cool. I do feel motivated. I did order the wiring harness for it, which is a course on back order. I kept all the wiring from the original car, but this motor was in a Thunderbird and the wiring for the motor was tied in together with the wiring from the car. So it'd be quite a job to disassemble it. So I spent $609 on a wiring harness and it's not gonna be here for a while yet. But in theory, we should be able to plug and play that. We do have the computer and then it should run. So in the meantime, we'll kind of get the drive line sorted. Uh, obviously intake, turbo, we have cooling systems. We got a lot to do before we get to that level. But I think the hardest part is in. See you on the next one.